In this video, I am going to walk you through how to set up a feed rule in Google Merchant Center. And what a feed rule allows you to do is to dynamically update an attribute within your feed, a single attribute or multiple attributes, based on the criteria that you decide. And so it can be very useful to edit the data in your feed if you've got errors or warnings, or if you just want to optimize your feed and improve the output of your various attributes. So it used to be that you could only do this with feed management platforms or enterprise software tools. And Google updated, I think it was last year sometime, allowed you the ability to now do this directly in Google Merchant Center. So let's dive in and I will walk you through how to set one of these up. So inside your Merchant Center, you're going to go to feeds and then you're gonna to go to your main product feed and you'll see the tab here that says feed rules. So in order to add a new feed rule, we just, not surprisingly enough, going to add the big blue plus button. So I am going to update my product title. So just start searching for the attribute, whichever attribute you'll want to update, and then just select it from the list. Now the first one I'm going to show you I'm just going to do a very simple update where I am going to add the brand to the end of the product title. So I don't need to set a condition because I want it to do this for all my products. And so all I do is I come in here and I'm going to click the set to. So what I want my title to be, instead of just being the product title, I want it to be the title followed by the brand. And then I'll have like a little dash or something. In between. So the first element I want to have in my new title is still going to be the title. So we're going to look for my primary feed and we're going to select title. And then if I were to just choose my brand here like this, what would happen is that those two would be squished together. There'd be no gap in between the, you know, the last um, character of the product title. There'd be no space then between the first character of the brand. So obviously that's not what I want. So in between, I just want to have like a little dash or something. So I'm just going to go space dash space so that we've got some spaces and enter. And this is just how you enter um, a text value in here. I could put anything in here. I could put bacon. I don't know where that came from. But anyway, any word you like that. If you want to just enter add text, set text, then that's how you do it. And then that's going to be followed by my brand. So I'm going to search brand and then select brand. OK, so we're going to hit OK and then we're going to save as draft. Now you'll see that our title attribute rule is sitting down here and it's set to draft. So the first thing you need to do is to test the changes that that makes. It's a really cool, it's, it's a bit slow. But it's a really good way to obviously you don't want to update your product feed without testing that it changes the way that you expect it to. If you start getting into complicated conditions and complicated dynamic updates, sometimes things don't work quite as you expect. So it's very important that you make sure that you hit this test button and test the changes. So you're going to hit test changes. Now, this can take five or ten minutes. So we're going to come back when this is finished. And it's finished. So as you can see here, it says show test. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to show test and we can see what changes actually were made. So if you come, it shows you the status of all your um, all your items and it says 15 approved items will become disapproved. So that's interesting. Um, so I'm not quite sure. Oh, that's, a, that's a, obviously a shopping ad policy that those have been flagged for. So that's fine. And the attributes that will change. So 230 items will change. And then we can open up the um, title to have a look. And we can see that the current title, so it gives you the idea of the actual title in the feed. So the current title, Aromatherapy Bath Salts Stress Buster, changes to Aromatherapy Bath Salts Stress Buster, Stress Buster Agent Wisdom. So that is 
exactly what I wanted to do. It's just adding the brand onto the end of the product title. So that's as long as that's absolutely fine, that all works. Then all you need to do is to go back to the main page, to your feed rules, and then you will hit apply. So bear in mind, if you're adding multiple feed rules, when you hit apply, it will apply to all the feed rules that you have set in draft. All right. So um, if you're testing multiple titles, uh, multiple um, feed rules updates, then it's worth testing them one at a time. So change one thing, test that and apply it if it works and then move on to another. It can get very confusing if you've got multiple things that you're changing and you can't see exactly what's going on very easily. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into this title one here and just walk you through a few of the options that we actually have when we're when we're setting up feed rules. That was just a very simple one to show you how it works. So the first thing you'll notice is that we have some conditions up here. So this is where you can tell Google that you only want the feed rule to run if certain conditions have been met within the feed. As an example, let's just click on this. And we might go in and say, well, OK, I only want you to run this if the availability equals in stock. So only change the title if the product is in stock. Otherwise, don't bother. So that's feed rules. You can you can set. And rules and or rules so you can go, uh, I can say, right, only set it if availability is in stock and um, buh, 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 buh. price is less than I'm just 10 okay just for argument's sake so if the if the availability is in stock and the price is less than 10 run my rule I can also add or so I can say if it's in stock and less than 10 or it's out of stock Sorry, it's out of stock. I mean, this is I wouldn't run this as a rule, but I'm just trying to illustrate if, if availability equals out of stock and price. Oh, wrong one up here. Price is greater than or equal to greater than or equal to 10. OK, so that's how you that you can get obviously quite involved with these ands and ors. Just make sure that you understand exactly how all that is working. So those are your conditions. The other thing that you have is you have various ways to update the actual attributes. So the first one that I used, obviously, is this set to. So you are just saying, OK, change the attribute to this and obviously this can be as we did a combination of attributes that already exist in the product feed it could be you could set it just set it to a value as an example if you wanted to set your identifier exists attribute you could just set, set this to false OK, so if I, I sell all custom products, but, but Shopify is a bit funny with custom products, doesn't always identify those in Merchant Center as being custom products. And so Google's constantly asking you for GTINs and MPNs, which you haven't got because they're custom products. You can come in here and say, OK, identifier exists, set it to false. Tell Google we do not need a GTIN or an MPN. OK. So as you can see, that's that's the set to version. You can also extract. So you can. Basically, you can. So as an exist talking about my my um, title, I might want to add the color to the title, but obviously the color is going to be. Um, different for all products and I might not have the color set to 
the colour attribute in all the products. I might Some of them might be blank. I might not have set it up at all. But my colour is always in my product description, for example. So I would say, I'll say, OK, look at my product description. Look for the, these words and use them for the attribute in found, if found in the sources value. So we're going to look for green, blue, red. You have to be careful with because any word that like coloured or partnered or <laughs> filtered is going to have R-E-D in it. So red is a bit of a tricky one that you have to look out for. But you get the idea. Pink, black, whatever, brown. So you can... Say, so look at the product description. If you see any of these values in the product description, OK, then um, populate this attribute. So you would use this like I want to I want to create my color attribute for all my products. Um, and instead of manually having to go through in and add it inside a spreadsheet or supplemental feed or something, you say, look at the product description. If you see any of these items, then populate that color with one of these items, just as an example, OK? Um, advanced options allow you to obviously whole words, search regular reg regular expressions. Um, keep only the first matching value. That's probably a good one to, um, to use, because obviously if you've got multiple colours mentioned in your product description, it will try and add all of those, and you can't do that. You can only have one colour in your colour attribute. So. But that gives you an idea of how you can use that to populate a field. The Take Laces tab, um, that only applies to availability and price. And basically it looks for the most recent value if you've got a price or an availability in multiple feeds. So for example, if you're using a supplemental feed to update your quantities or something, then this will tell it to look for the most for the late for the most recent value to update your main feed in any of these options if you hit the link learn more link here it goes into a lot of detail um you know there's lots of information here about feed rules and i believe at the bottom it will show you um it walks you through setting up different feed rules and that kind of thing. So well worth having that read if you're not sure. But I would I would always have a test because the joy of using feed rules like this, if we just cancel and go back obviously, is that you can try updating a a value and then you can just you can you can test it to make sure that it works. And if it works fine you can apply it. If it doesn't then you can either edit it or you can discard it. But it can be a really, really powerful way of dynamically updating the attributes in your product feed without having to pay for additional software to give you that opportunity. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you have, please do hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. And if you hit the bell icon, then you'll get notified when I publish a new video, which is usually once a week. Um, don't forget to share with your friends too, if you think that that will be useful for them. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.